Okay. It's been a few days. Um. Oh yeah, right. I'm on a boss. Uh. So yeah, I did. As you can probably tell, I did beat the big the big dude. I beat him. But I'm just I I got the recording done. I so like I had recorded for three days straight, and I had a lot of space on my computer. But I had recorded so much that I ran out of space, and the final like three hours of my last recording is completely gone. I if I was smart, I would have kept the PlayStation on and made sure I had gotten that, and then were clipped on PlayStation if I really had to. But I'm not smart. I think I'll redo them at the end. I'll do like a boss rush. Maybe not even at the end, but like in a few months or something when I want to come back. Because I do like to come back to good games like this. But I did just think I should get that out of the way immediately. Okay, so that... I thought I could block that. Um, as you can tell, I'm off my P's and Q's. I've been playing... Okay, so I really, the first time I played Persona 5, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda hated it. I came back and played it, uh, when even was it? Like a few, like yesterday or the day before? And, oh my god, I had so much fun. I played the entire first, like, part in the castle at the school in one day. <laughs> oh my god, it was so much fun. I didn't think I was gonna have fun though, so I didn't record it. And it's, I, I don't want to exactly start it, like, right then, so I think instead I'll just play it by myself. But it is so much fun. It's just, my days have been kind of weird for the last few days, because I have been playing, I've been playing Overwatch again, because I ha so I have a scrapped video already. Um, I was gonna do all of the Overwatch achievements, and I did get most of them. But, it, honestly, when I was watching it back, Overwatch is just not that fun to watch. Like, it's it's alright if you know how to do it, but I do not. And it's just not my style. I figured out that I do not like multiplayer games very much. Like, I, I do like certain multiplayer games, for sure. But currently, all multiplayer games kind of suck. Fortnite is terrible. Like, I... I I love Fortnite, but oh my god, it's so boring right now. I just keep making that mistake. But, I love Fortnite, it's so boring right now. Overwatch has just been, like, brutalized by Blizzard. And I'm, I am, I, after I've seen what they've been doing right now, I think I am eventually gonna make a pretty lengthy video about explaining what happened. I'm, Blizzard has gotta be my least favorite company. I think everyone's got their comp video game company that they hate. And mine's Blizzard. I absolutely hate Blizzard. It's so bad. And the fanboys are even worse, bro. The fanboys are so bad. I don't understand how they even can defend what they're doing right now with Overwatch. They are making a pack that you pretty much have to buy Overwatch again. Well, tech, it's really for newcomers, which I do understand that. I understand that you want to attract new people. But for the old founders of the game, so the people who have bought the game already, no matter what edition, I have the Legendary Edition, and I bought it when the game, like, first came out. We're getting two skins. One is a Sombra skin that looks pretty bad, honestly. And a Doomfist skin, which just looks bland. And then this new pack... And the skins aren't even my, the biggest problem I have with it. This new pack has two extremely, like, pretty cool skins. Like, they're, they they have some work put into them. And they get access to the next beta for for guaranteed, which is silly that the Overwatch 1 players just don't automatically get that. Then, over, then um, they get the next, the first battle pass, which is kind of scary honestly that's like pre-ordering a battle pass like who knows what this battle pass could be it could be terrible and then i'm but it is still probably worth about ten dollars and then i think two thousand currency which i'd assume is about twenty dollars worth and i think that's so dumb that they give all of that to the the new new or yeah new players but to their old players we're getting two bad skins and something that they haven't said what it is a lot of people think it's the battle pass, which if it is, that's kind of cool, I guess. 
but I, well, I've seen pretty much everyone who play, played the game agrees that they would rather just get new currency than those two skins, because those two skins do not look like they put very much time into them. And no offense to character designers or skin designers, because they always do a good job, but I do agree. I don't think either of those skins are, like, the best that they've ever done. And I don't think they necessarily have to be, but, like, I think that what they at least should have done is get one skin for each role, because, like, oh, I am not gonna ever use the Doomfist skin or the Sombra skin, but if they had put, like, a healer one, I would guaranteed I'd use it, since there's so little healers. Unless it was bad, like the other two, which probably would have been, knowing, knowing what they're doing. And the, there's people who are genuinely defending that new pack, and the fact... And, okay, so to be fair, if they had made it so that old people, or the old Overwatch players could buy it for, like, a discounted price, just slightly, I think that would have been fine. Like, if there's, like, a $30, $30 pack, it's still kind of annoying, and I don't know if I would have bought it, but... It's better than currently paying $40 for a game we already own. Pretty much the only reason an old player would want to buy it is either for the skins or for the uh, battle pass, which or the currency, which we don't even know what that's for currently, so. I just don't, I don't even understand how they ever thought it was a good idea to do what they're doing. Oh yeah, not this shit, bro. I won't rant the whole time about it, but it is something that bugs me quite a bit. And I just, I honestly just don't understand how people defend Blizzard at this point. They are by far the worst. Like, there's a dude who is posting, like, I think he posted, like, eight Reddit posts. Not eight Reddit posts, like, eight uh, Reddit posts that has, like, 8,000, or not 8,000, 800 comments. And he is defending them so hard in every single one of them. And when, and like, he's saying such dumb stuff, he's like, Blizzard hasn't made that bad of a decision before. Bro, they literally, like, sexually assaulted women at their workplace, bro. What do you mean they're not gonna make a bad decision? Blizzard is literally, and Diablo Immortal, even if we're just talking about games, Diablo Immortal got brutalized by monetization. What do you mean they're not gonna monetize this game to a brutal level? Like, I hope that I'm wrong, but I don't think it is. I think if they mess up their monetization, it will kill the game. Because that's kind of what happened to Halo. It seems like they just focused so hard on making money through that item shop store that they didn't put too much time into the actual game. And now Halo had a really good star, like a really solid base, but it's just fallen apart because no one buys stuff in their item shop, I would assume. So people just so they aren't making money from the thing that they put so much of their time and effort into. I just think it's astonishing, especially, and I think it's even worse coming right off of Elden Ring, because Elden Ring is the first triple game, a, or a triple A game in years that hasn't had, like, a super predatory monetization scheme. The only game I will say has a relatively alright, uh, monetization system, other than Overwatch currently. The, oh, I know everyone hates loot boxes, and that's fair. But the old over or the new Overwatch loot boxes are so like actually good, because you just get them per game, and you sure you get duplicates. But if you get duplicates, you get currency back, and if you don't get dupl and if you get a bunch of and if you open enough, you start to get like, if you have all the blues in the game, you start to get purples a lot more often. If you get all the purples in the game, you start to get legendaries a lot more often. It's just nice, and you're pretty much able to buy any new skin that comes out currently for free. It was extremely nice, and I know why they're not doing it, because it was clearly losing them money, significant amounts of money, and they've got to try to compete with, like, COD or whatever, but, and I'm sure Overwatch players will buy whatever that comes out, but I'm already concerned. And there's also a lot of comments that just say, like, get your money up, which, yeah, if you have a bunch of money, yeah, sure, it's not a problem, but it's still dumb. Like, I shouldn't be expected to drop, like, 40, I think... It's looking like the Mythic skins, which looking really, really good. You're going to have to pay for them. My hope is it's in the Battle Pass. I'm guessing, though, they're going to charge like $40 for these Mythic skins in the item shop. And if that's what happens, I'm not ever going to buy one. And I'm sure some people will, but... 
it really does seem like though that they they've made all of this like new stuff but the game barely is like anything new like very like it has new stuff but they have three new characters it looks like is what we're gonna get on launch which is honestly bad like that is just straight up a bad bad thing that shouldn't be how it is we should have gotten like at least nine i think and I know that you don't necessarily want 8 million heroes in this game, but the fact, or at least, like, rework them. The one thing I am scared that they're going to do, though, is they're going to start removing characters. That's because they seem to be already, they seem to be pushing out a lot of their older characters. And I might be wrong on this, this is, like, complete speculation, but they seem to be pushing out a lot of their older characters in favor of new ones. So my idea is eventually people are going to be like, hey, there's too many characters. So we're going to start removing old characters. I think some of the first ones to go would be like Ryan Hart, which would be a very upsetting. And Valorant just did something like that recently. They removed Split, which is a very solid map, and kept in two of what I would say are the worst maps in the game just to add this new one, which looks all right. I, won't, I can't speak on the new map. The new map looks fine. But they kept in Fracture and Breeze, which are just, the almost the entire community agrees that those are worst maps in the game. And got rid of one of the, like, pretty decent ones for this new map. And they're going to rotate it, I guess, maybe, but that is just upsetting to me. I think removing things in games like this, is in online games, sucks. Because there's always somebody who's going to like it. Like, and if they remove Reinhardt, I will never play Overwatch again. Simple as that. I honestly, I could not support that. And like currently, I'm kind of thinking about not buying or not playing Overwatch 2, depending on how terrible their monetization thing is. Because I'm so goddamn sick and tired of gaming companies just shitting on their customers and nobody, and ad gamers just accepting it. It's so dumb. Don't accept it. <laughs> we deserve better. We deserve, like, from software games. It's literally, I think it's the most profitable industry in the world right now. Don't quote me on that, but it's like one of the most profitable industries in the world right now. And somehow the quality of it is just getting worse and worse. I don't understand. And I won't say it for everything, because there's definitely some really good, like, indie games. It's insane right now for indie games. And certain big companies, like From Software and games like that, are making really good games. The people who make Ghost of Tsushima making really good games it's just the vast majority especially of online multiplayer games right now are doing terrible things just for money's sake like cod oh my god cod oh i hate cod so much and the people who defend cod i respect i respect if you enjoy something like i genuinely do like i i love what like, hero to do one i love the Star Wars stuff, but oh my god, most of the Star Wars stuff kind of sucks. Especially newer stuff, but it's, oh my god, <laughs> like, it's pretty bad. But I do understand you want to defend your, th your thing, for sure, I get that. But some things you can't defend, like especially, COD has just been going down. Like, they don't innovate at all. They don't even add stuff from other games. Like, I know that a lot of people will be like, COD is copying something like that. But that's just dumb. Like, those people are just dumb. Holy shit. I just realized that is so much bonus damage that I've been missing out on. No. Oh. That was really good, though. Honestly. That was really good. Hmm. <sighs> And like I said, there's definitely some good games. Oh, another, one of the only other companies that I hate in, that makes games that everyone else seems to love for some reason, probably because I made old games that were really good and it's just I never played those old games, is Bethesda, bro. Star, like, I don't know about Starfield. I can't speak on it. It doesn't look like the best, but I kind of figured it wouldn't. They're shooting really big. But everyone loves Bethesda so much. I don't understand. They haven't made a good game in years. They made Fallout 76. They made all these other... They made just so many other games that aren't good. Like, I understand they made Fallout. Which, Fallout 4 and Fallout 3, which are really good games. For, uh, I'm not even the biggest fan of those, though, to be fair. 
but they, they're solid games. I can respect that everyone enjoys them. But, like, what was the last Bethesda game that was good? Why is everyone hyped for his next Bethesda game? It's like a C CD Projekt Red, the people who made The Witcher. Everyone got hyped for Cyber... Like, super hyped for Cyberpunk. When, clearly, they weren't going to do a good job. It's too big of a game. I also just don't understand why people are making insanely huge games. Because then it, like, kind of kills the entire... Uh, not the entire point, but it makes it significantly harder to make, like, a story. Like, a good story. I don't need the biggest game in the world if it means that the story's gonna be lacking. Like, obviously, it'd be really cool if we got a insanely big game with an even bigger story. But, like, with how games are going, most of them have a really just bad story because we're going really big, big, like, style. Like, this game, like, most of the FromSoft games just have these in, like, I don't necessarily love the stories. Oh, I do, actually. I like the stories a lot. I don't understand everything in the story, but at least it's a concise, like, this kind of makes sense. Especially this game. I've actually pretty much understood everything this game. Elden Ring, I had to watch a few videos to understand. Demon Souls, I didn't understand a single thing, but... And, like... As much as I dislike The Last of Us Part 2, it has a solid story, and it's a pretty, like, large game. It's, this is, do I think the story is, like, the best? No, hell no. I think that story sucks, compared to the first one especially. That's my main thing. I think people who think that The Last of Us Part 2 story is, like, horrendous, that's fair, but I just think it's terrible when you look at it compared to the first one. The first one's story was fantastic. And the second one was a lot less interesting. And it's a classic. It's like the biggest trope. My least favorite trope probably. Which is revenge is terrible. No. Revenge you shouldn't like. You shouldn't wish for revenge. You shouldn't want to get revenge on like somebody that hasn't done anything or something. But revenge is not always a bad thing bro. Like that's, one, that's why some of my favorite. Like. Like Sasuke. I love that guy because he he understands he understands what's happening but he still is like yeah what they did deserves to go punished they shouldn't just get away with whatever the village was doing so I just I I dislike that single trope oh fuck I dislike that single trope and that's a, it's that's about it I don't like hate the entire story like like a bunch but like i said it's at least it's still a good story that i can understand well, not a good story a story i can understand and not just bloated for no reason anyone played the far cries recently because that's kind of what made me think of this it's, jesus christ i played far cry i think it was four or five and oh my god it just doesn't the story's like a like a like a fever dream i don't understand what's happening and i know it's because ubisoft just kind of sucks but jesus christ they used to make pretty solid games, I thought. Maybe. Or maybe I was just a child. And one and I'm not saying I can make anything better than most other game like developers. Obviously I can. I can't even make a story that's better. But I just want better, I guess, as a consumer. And especially something like Overwatch. I have not honestly, I've not been looking forward to the Overwatch 2 stuff one bit i have been skeptical the entire time i've been actually just unsure of if they're gonna make a good game the beta came out and the game seems like it's actually all right like i i wouldn't say it's like anything better than what it kind of was before but it seems all right compared to before oh my god oh my god And I do think, I think it's the main reason why Overwatch is going bad like this, and has been going in a bad direction for so long, is because of this monetization thing, which is so upsetting, because I, like I said, I love Overwatch, I loved Overwatch 1, it was, it's probably still got my favorite shooter base, like, base game, out of anything, it is so cool, as an idea, and in, in, in practice, especially at the beginning, it was so good. It was so fun. Every character felt cool. 
everything was just a fun thing to do. But at some point, they just fucked it up. I think it was most, it's almost all because of the money. I won't blame it all on the money. But, like, one of the main things they've done is push the Overwatch League super hard. Which has failed. Super hardcore. Like, there's no other way to say it. Overwatch League has failed. Pretty hard. Obviously, it's made money. But it's failed as a, like, attracting new people into the league. Nobody cares about the Overwatch League. And it just led to bad changes, in my opinion. I am one of the very few people who play Overwatch still who think that roll queue is a bad idea. And I know that it's super nice for any, like, solo players. I get that. Trust me, I was also a solo player. But I, well, but I would much prefer to go back to that rather than roll lock. Roll lock sucks so hard. It's so, like, unfun to people who like to, who liked the, like, idea of switching characters in the game just switching a whole bunch not obviously all the time but i loved playing healers and tank i did not like playing dps because i'm not a good gamer but i love playing healers and tank and now sure you can queue up for them both still but you can only play one in a game i also miss all the fun strats i know that uh, like apparently goats was horrible and it, it i thought goats was pretty fun to be completely honest at the high level i'm sure it was frustrating but in the lower levels, it was really fun. It was just a, like, an experience you could only get in Overwatch. There's no other game you could possibly get it in. But it's just... It's, everybody complained it got removed, which I, I, I understand. But especially the higher-up people players hated it. So it got removed pretty, pretty hardcore, too. And it has led to just no more roll queue. Or no more free queue, really. In the U.S., I know in Asia, the more popular competitive experience is the no roll queue, but in the U.S., everybody doesn't play it, which is really frustrating, because I just think it is a better experience for most, for my personal thing. I don't want to force everyone into it, really, but I just wish more people played it. And that's my Overwatch rant. And just games in general rant. And especially, I'm, okay, I'm going to keep, <laughs> while I keep learning this boss, I might as well talk about something interesting, I guess. Um, or at least something I think is interesting. I just think that, like, gaming in general, I saw a, a chart of critic reviews versus, like, user reviews for the past 20 years, and they've fallen, the user reviews have fallen so hard, because... I think it became super, like, a big industry compared to, like, before. You'd get lots of games like Sekiro or Persona or things like that that are just kind of crazy. They're a little wonky, too, but they're they're fun. They're new and interesting. Now we just get copy-pasted of the exact same game, like, eight times. And everything has to have a battle pass and a store and 18,000 ways to make money. When they don't get it, though, hopefully... With, and most single player games aren't really a, too bad with this. The only single player games I can really think of that were kind of terrible about this were are like Ubisoft games, and I, I don't count those. <laughs> those aren't real. And games that just like always add tons of DLC and stuff, really. But like most single player games are pretty solid about it still. They The most they'll ever do is DLC, which. I know everyone hates DLC, but I honestly liked DLC because it was pretty much like, hey, you pay $10 for this extra entire story, all these new fun items, and, like, some skins. I was like, alright, fuck yeah, that sounds fun. And, like, a new harder mode or something. But now with gaming, it's like, here's your $10 a month battle pass. <laughs> and, I, and it is kind of Fortnite's fault, but also, I still think to this day Fortnite's one of the only good battle passes because you're able to earn the currency or yeah the currency that you buy stuff with in that battle pass and you're able to earn enough to keep buying the next battle pass if overwatch does that i think the battle pass will be all right and i'm just hoping they don't go the valorant route with their store because valorant has the worst prices for their skins i have ever seen in my life it's like it's, it's like 50 dollars for like a knife skin one knife skin <laughs> And it's not even like the knife is like super crazy. Like it's definitely, it's a pretty cool skin usually. 
but it's not like I wouldn't say it's. I think my the my favorite like skins in any game are Overwatch skins. They look so cool. All of them feel so different. But damn, bro! Oh shit! I just got stomped. Oh my god! I'm messing up. But Valorant stuff, I just really am scared they're gonna do, like, Valorant prices. And I really think if they put Mythics over, like, thir I think I think 25, honestly, should be the max for any skin in a video game. It is it is honestly ridiculous that some cost more, in my opinion. Especially, especially, like, gun skins. It's ridiculous. And I understand in, like, games like Valorant, it's first person, so it that is pretty much all you see. It's just, like why that just sounds like a bad price like i tell somebody that i bought a new valorant skin and they're like oh how much was it and you have to say oh it's like 40 dollars for the, the a pistol and they're like wait what <laughs> and you're like yeah i don't really know i just looked really cool and to be fair i haven't, I haven't bought a valorant thing in a very long time so I, i'm maybe they've cheapened the price but i doubt it I guess I just hate the free-to-play model. That's like my biggest fear. That was my biggest fear with Overwatch 2. Is the free-to-play stuff. Because if it was any other company, I'd have a little bit of confidence. But because Blizzard, it's Blizzard, I was certain they are going to fuck it up. And then Diablo Immortal came out, which just confirmed my, my fear. <laughs> of Blizzard being absolute maniacs when it comes to pricing things. I don't know who they hired, but they're absolute psychopaths. And on, I want to make one thing clear. I do not think it's the developers, ever. Anyone who says the devs do this is usually just dumb. The devs don't do shit. They're, they're coding, like, a single line of code. Or not a single line of code, like a big chunk of code that was told to them to, that they have to do it by the higher-ups, usually, or the creative director, or whatever they're doing. But, I almost never blame the devs. There's been a few devs, like, a few things where devs have done that have been pretty stinky in the past in certain games, but I think it's bad to just blame them. They almost, they almost never do anything like that. It's almost always a decision from higher-up. Oh, in another game with really... The a uh, different example of the complete opposite side of Blizzard is Epic Games. They their prices are definitely pretty high, but at least their skins are like nuts. Usually, like I personally am not the biggest fan of Fortnite like original skins because they're usually they're cool, but they're not like super cool. But with their crossovers, man, it's really cool to play as like Naruto for twenty dollars. That's just a cool thing in Fortnite. Like that's just cool. I don't think it's necessarily the best prices still, because I think $20 is quite a bit for a skin. But at least in Fortnite, you like fully see the entire skin, the entire game. It looks insane. It's not like... And that is the other thing with Overwatch. If they try to charge too much, I don't think they remember that, that you only see their skins, like... You only see certain characters' skins really in their guns. Like, if you're spectating, I guess you might see some, but... It's, you don't see, and like, if you play very specific characters, they will occasionally have things that make, like, make you see in third person, like Reinhardt, when he holds up his shield, goes into third person. But it's not like that happens all the time. Like, I would honestly, I would hope that legendaries are $10 and mythics are, tw are 20 I think that would be the best price. Which I know they won't, because it's Blizzard, I'm sure they'll be... Legendaries will be 20 if I have to guess, and the Mythics will be like 35, maybe even 40. Either that, or they're only going to be in the like, final tier of the Battle Pass, which... Honestly, if they're in the Battle Pass, a lot of my complaints are gone. It's still not like the coolest thing, but... It's better than $35 skins in the item shop. And I'm still pissed about that pack situation. Like, that is just bad. And especially if they do what they did last time, where they were letting people into the beta, where you were allowed to sign up, but, like, three people got in, and they were all streamers from the beta. It, from the sign-up thing. 
that was a little weird. It made me feel like I had just wasted that time signing up, and they had tricked me into tr getting invested in the signing up and waiting all day. And then they made me watch four hours of a Twitch stream, which worked for them, I guess, until it didn't, until after, which I'm sure they're never going to do this again because they saw what happened. Everyone played it for a day, and then they were like, wow, this game kind of sucks, <laughs> and stopped. So it showed everyone who wanted to play Overwatch that the game was not that different or not that good, one of the two, based on the fact that it went from, I think it was like 1.7 million viewers to like 10k in like a day. That also should show you that there are people who love the game that are casual people that aren't that don't care about like Twitch streams or your competitive league. Ugh, it's just so frustrating. I could make an entire like rant about how just bad Blizzard is. It's so it's astonishing. And the fact that people still defend them after everything they've done is honestly even more astonishing. Like, I would have thought by now that gamers, that the people who defend Blizzard would have been tired of getting spit in their mouth, pretty much, by Blizzard. And I'm, and I'm only complaining about, like, the game stuff. They did significantly worse stuff that aren't even related to games. That clearly shows that they're just money-oriented bad people. At least the higher-ups. I Like I said, I don't think everyone is a bad person at Blizzard. I'm sure there's some, some kid like me who grew up playing Overwatch. And wanted to go work at Blizzard because they love that game. And I'm sure there's people like that for all of their games. But I'm also sure that there's people in those games that are absolute maniacs. Pretty much, I'm just appreciating how good games like Sekiro and Persona are. Oh, did we just lose internet? I think we did. And how rare it is to get a new game that's like this good, honestly. That isn't an indie game. And I'm not, I'm not, honestly, I'm not that big of a fan of indie games, but I definitely can, I, I appreciate people who do make them. And certain indie games are just actually insane. I don't play them too often, like I said, but I, I do occasionally hop on to some indie games, and they're just pretty good. They're pretty consistently good compared to this, where, compared not to this, but to AAA games where it's either a really good game or it's a really bad game that was clearly ruined by somebody in the, in the decision-making process. I will say one of the very few things that I have disliked about this game is maybe it's just getting harder, and I like peaked my skill, and I just I'm struggling to get better. But it feels like in every single like FromSoft game, the game's super fun until like halfway through, or not halfway, like the very end, and then well not the very end, like the the middle end, like pretty much the the final like not final, the four bosses before the final boss is what I would say are usually like just not very fun like i i'm honestly not the biggest fan of this guy i like his second thing and i really like his uh his second stage thing and i don't know about his third stage so maybe he'll win me over even more but and i really like the environment it takes place in but like man i already fought this dude and i know he only had one one bar back then and his moves were well honestly his moves were pretty much the same which is, I think, why it's so boring to me. It's, it's I still think it's better than, like, most other games. But it does bring down the quality. And I think that's why I haven't wanted to play in a while. is because this guy just didn't want to fight him. He was like, yeah, I already fought this guy a while ago. <laughs> and he was, he was fun, I guess. But he, actually, no, he wasn't, to be completely honest with you. I did not like this fight. I thought it was boring, and it was because I had to use freaking confetti, divine confetti. I mean, I didn't have to, but it's like, you should, pretty much, is what it felt like. Well, that was satisfying. Fuck yeah. Damn. 
And uh, when, I always hate critiquing this game because it could be, or games like this, because it could just be that I'm playing them wrong, which I honestly wouldn't doubt at all. It's like certain bosses I will just miss entire like things that make sense because I'm dumb. Okay, so we should appear, I think, right? Yep. Oh, I didn't see that symbol. Damn. Also, I think being colorblind in this game is the worst. I'm sure there's a colorblind setting, but I just can't see that red sometimes. It blends in too much. Oh. Damn, how'd that hit, bruh? Don't fade away. God, I knew it. Like, this is just cool. I don't think it's, like, actually that fun to fight. But it's just a cool, like, I'm fighting, like, shadows of him, it feels like. Which one? Where? Oh, yeah. Alright, let's see how your last stage is, man. Oh, shit. I bet he's got a whole new move moveset, maybe. Whoa, that was a scary looking attack, bro. Whoa. Whoa. So he's mad aggressive now. Whoa. Damn. Holy shit. He low key stomping me. I didn't get a single break right then. Do I, like, have to block a bunch of this stuff? What was happening? Fuck. Ah. Oh. That stage was ridiculous. What?